The government in Bangladesh is threatening to send tens of thousands of Rohingya refugees to a remote island by force, despite warnings from environmentalists and rights groups. Accommodation on the island of Basanchar has been specially constructed for the refugees. The government says it will offer a new start for the Rohingya. But the low-lying island in the Bay of Bengal is vulnerable to erosion and flooding, and critics have condemned the plan. Our correspondent, Naomi Conrad, was granted access to the site. In the world's largest refugee camp in southern Bangladesh, fear is rife. Two years ago, the government welcomed the influx of Rohingya fleeing Myanmar. Today, it is planning to send tens of thousands of them to an island in an area prone to cyclones. We don't want to go to Bazanchar because it gets flooded and then people will die. Our children will be drowned. For them, it's another trap where they'll lose their lives. If we go there, we'll die. Help us to stay here. We lost our parents and came here to save our lives. Don't send us to Basanchar. Just kill us here. No Western journalists have been granted access to the island until now. DW was taken to Basanchar by Bangladesh's Navy, which is overseeing the construction works. Throughout our stay, we were accompanied by naval officers. It took us three hours to reach Basanchar on a naval ship. The sea was choppy, but relatively calm for this time of the year. What is the longest period that you think ships might not be able to reach the island and in really bad weather conditions? If the cyclonic storming warning, that maybe one or two days or three days maximum, not more than that. And we have never, we have, for the Navy ship, we have never stopped. Nobody will be evacuated from this island. That is because the Navy says they have built sufficient protection against floods and erosion, including a three-metre-high embankment. Inside, there is space for 100,000 Rohingyas housed in clusters of identical shelters. Human rights organisations fear that refugees may be contained on the remote island for years. Sometimes this, this island is described as a jail. Does that offend you? Yes. The question is, uh, uh, the people who make comments like floating island, uh, unsafe island, yes, they, they, they don't understand the island, they, they didn't see the island, and they don't know about the hot facility we are providing. The island's 120 cyclone shelters can be used as hospitals, primary schools and community centres. To provide security, there will be police posts and cameras monitoring the island. We will provide something to the Rohingya. They will remember it for their life. And it's in the crisis, we help them. If they come here, it is paradise for them. It's no doubt about that. From what we've seen, conditions here do seem to be better than in Cox's Bazaar. But questions remain around what daily life might be like. Will there be secondary education for young people? What will they do all day? Can the refugees earn their own living? And will they be able to leave the island without a special permit? And of course, what happens here when a cyclone hits? Bazan Shah didn't exist 20 years ago. Islands in the Bay of Bengal are formed by sediments and make up an ever-changing ecosystem. Yeah. We showed the footage we took to an expert in sea erosion. It's geographically uh, fragile, so uh, it can be eroded, it can be washed away, because uh, a, a, a sandy island or chore needs at least two to three decades to be Permanent. Without an embankment, Bazanchar would be too dangerous for habitation. Experts DW contacted disagreed whether the barrier is high enough, but the government seems adamant to relocate Rohingya to the island. We may force them to there. We don't have enough space here, so we will force them. If they are not willing, we'll force them. Once the decision has been taken, refugees could be relocated in a matter of weeks, even against their will. And DW's Naomi Conrad, who filed that report, is with us here in the studio. Great to see you, Naomi. So, what's your impression of the camp when you were there? 
Were you not thinking, well, this is going to be a lot better for the refugees than Cox's Bazaar, where hundreds of thousands are living in really difficult conditions? Well, if you look at the settlement itself, yes, it's, it's an improvement. The people would have more space, the rooms are airy, the, the camps in Cox's Bazaar are stiflingly hot in the summer. I mean, I went inside some of the huts. It's really difficult to spend for me to even just spend half an hour for an interview inside these huts. Um, so if you look at the settlement itself, yes, the infrastructure is a lot better. There's security, um, the roads are secured, but then you have to look at the island itself and the questions that, you know, we, we try to, to answer in the report of whether this island is actually safe, whether the flood embankment is high enough. So the settlement itself looks a lot better, but the bigger questions around the island and also whether the refugees would be allowed off the island whether they would have free movement, uh, those are the questions. Now, you spoke with Myanmar's foreign minister about the relocation plans. Uh, he suggested that the Rohingya could be moved to the island even if the UN objects. Let's listen to what he had to say. What is the most extreme step you could take if the UN disagrees? Would you kick the UN agencies out of we'll Bangladesh? Do. We'll do. And if that is necessary, we'll do. So to be clear, if they don't support your plan of Bazan Shah, you will tell them to we leave? We have to make a decision and we'll talk to them and see. It. So it sounds like Bangladesh's government is absolutely determined to send the refugees to this island. What is the UN saying about it? Yes, I mean, Bangladesh built this settlement for the Rohingya. They spent a lot of money on it, so of course they want to move the Rohingya there. But it's difficult because the UN, I mean, the agencies, they're footing the bill of this multi-million dollar humanitarian effort. I, at Cox's Bazaar. At Cox's Bazaar. Yeah. So they, they depend on international donors to feed the refugees, to um, provide schooling for the refugees, to... to you know, provide all the basic health care, all the basic uh, necessities that the refugees need. So it would be incredibly difficult to, to force the refugees to leave against the, against the, uh, the UN's wishes. It's a difficult situation, diplomatically very sensitive at this point. Apparently, a number of the refugees really are saying that they do not want to go to the island. They are afraid to go there for the reasons that you mentioned. Well, if not enough volunteers are found among the refugees, how would the government go about forcing them to go? Yes, it's very uh, difficult to imagine them sending in tanks or soldiers, of course, but what they seem to be doing right now, and that this just came uh, a couple of, of days ago, is that they want to make the living conditions more difficult in Cox's Bazaar. So we just heard that they've, uh, they're have they forcing the telecommunications providers to uh, turn off the internet, uh, not to sell SIM cards to Rohingya anymore, uh, which would basically cut them off from any kind of communication. So there seems to be that kind of pressure, you know, putting pressure on the refugees to make the living conditions even harder in Cox's Bazaar, which may then lead a certain number of Rohingya to maybe sign up voluntarily to move to this island, which then suddenly looks maybe more attractive than it does now. Very quickly, how, how soon do you think uh, we could see those refugees move to the island? Well, in, in Dhaka, there was talk of after the monsoon, so in the coming weeks. Okay, Naomi, thank you so much. Uh, DW correspondent Naomi Conrad.